Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on understanding of DFR dialectic frequency response concept and benefits of testing and assessment of insulation diagnostics. <clears throat> My name is Sanjay Yadav and I'll be hosting this session today. Speaker for today's session is Mr. Zafar al Durazi, who is a sales engineer technical at Mega Middle East. Before handing the mic over to Mr. Zafar, I would like to highlight a few points. You all are being muted to avoid any disturbance during the presentation. Do park any question you may have for the Q&A session at the end or share it in the chat window. All questions will be answered at the end of the session by Mr. Zafar. We have a mega social media page on Facebook and LinkedIn. You can go in, I'll just share that in the chat section. You can go and uh, register yourself for regular updates. We also have upcoming webinars in March and April. So I've just shared that in the chat section too, and you can go and register yourself for the upcoming webinars. There will be a small survey form at the end of the webinar, so please do feel the same for the feedback regarding the webinar. The recording of this webinar will be sent to in two working days to the GoToWebinar system as the sender process and also the certificate. I now hand over the control to Mr. Zafar. So let's get started. Over to you, Zafar. Thank you, Sanjay, and welcome to today's webinar about DFR mainly, its benefits, concepts, and uh, assessment benefits as well. So before we start, just uh, again, what says uh, what Sanjay says uh, that you can send the questions on on the right side. You have a window uh, dedicated for question. You can just uh, type it and send it, and I will answer it by the end of uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, this is me, Jafar Dorazi, application engineer with Mega Middle East team located in Bahrain office, uh, responsible on the entire Middle East as an application engineer. Uh, help and develop our customers and, and, and mainly power transformer or substation equipment. And I'm here uh, since 2013. So our agenda, we are uh, going to understand or making understanding of TAN Delta and its DFR, mainly introduction on, on, on TAN Delta. Then we talk about the benefits of uh, testing uh, with MEGA IDAX unit, and then the benefits of assessment using also IDAX uh, software. So starting with that, uh, transformers, uh, one of its state-of-art measurement of moisture content is making tan delta as a power factor or oil conductivity uh, assessment using the DFR or dielectric frequency response. So what is tan delta first and what is DFR? Tan delta, if we assume we have two winding and we have insulation in between, this is usually into the transformer where we have some insulation material um, that is just like we take the insulation by itself uh, and we look at it as an electrical element, it will be like a capacitor. This capacitor is not only located between high voltage winding and low voltage, we also have two more, which is between high to ground and also low to ground. So we have several insulation material, I mean several uh, different points need to be insulation with insulation material, could be paper, it could be oil, it could be spacers, barriers, whatever. At the end of the day, it is an insulation. These insulations, if we take it as a capacitor and we apply AC voltage, we will drive some current going through the resistance and capacitance, uh, which these two current can be also uh, identified based on the angle difference between total current and voltage. So we have angle as theta. Uh, we have very small angle, normally uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, uh, degrees, uh, which is called delta between the I total and I capacitance, and that's due to the losses we have for the equivalent circuit here when we talk about the resistance. And simply, when we divide these two currents, I losses by I capacitance, we just like doing the trigonometrically uh, the tangent uh, delta, which is the loss tangent. That is the famous. Uh, equipment name we have also with that name as a tan delta unit or uh, as a tan delta uh, description parameter for the insulation. 
So that's the more when you have 10 delta value, the more losses, I losses current over the I capacitor, which means the bad insulation you have, or we say it's an aging, uh, aged insulation rather than a new insulation. So the smaller 10 delta is equal to lower res uh, resistance loss, the more 10 delta equal to more losses with the newer insulation. So that is more likely an aged uh, insulation and we need to take uh, some corrective action either by doing some maintenance if we can do for that type of uh, insulation or uh, even we can plan for total replacement of our assets, whether if it's a transformer or whatever of pushing uh, or um, uh, some push, uh, CT, uh, pushing CT, or even some oil, oil type of circuit breaker where it was uh, oil type circuit breakers. So, uh, as a perfect insulation, we have ideal capacitors. I was telling uh, with very, very low dissipation factor. Uh, the more leakage, the more dissipation factor, the bad insulation you have. And if dissipation uh, in the transformer pushing cable is too high, you may get self generate for heating. Tan delta quality parameter for insulation. So tan delta is a quality parameter for insulation. And traditionally, we are measuring this at 50 hertz. So what is DFR from that? It is dielectric frequency response. And that's simply by taking uh, the frequency versus tan delta. We were doing that tan delta only at 50 hertz, but that's only part of the picture. If we do it at different frequency, we complete the picture. So now we have better picture instead of only single value of tan delta. So that is the DFR uh, curve uh, explanation. It is tan delta at single point, but to get the full part of the picture, we just change the frequency to higher frequencies. We keep measuring tan delta to lower frequency, measuring tan delta. So we get the full picture of the insulation. And that's just like fingerprint picture. Uh, today and tomorrow, we should see no change if the insulation remains the same. And if more contamination enter to the uh, insulation or change in its property, making it with higher than delta value, this picture should change. So that's simply saying to us uh, that DFR curve um, is uh, should be very much fingerprint so you compare it today with the next year with the year after and after and uh, there should be no change if it's changed by the fact that moisture content into that insulation it will rise the curve in the higher frequencies and lower frequencies so we will have shipped up in our curve the red curve here to higher values of tan delta that's indication of more moisture. Similarly, it will be also on the low frequency region. In the medium frequency, we have shift to left and right, and that's dependent uh, depend on the oil conductivity. The more uh, conductivity we have, which means bad oil, these uh, red uh, curves will be shifted to the right side. The more it's to left, it's mean of more dry oil uh, with less uh, conductivity, which is uh, better oil in terms of insulation. Um, we have also here the whole uh, graph will be shifted to the right side or to the left side. That's depending on the temperature. The more temperature will make our curve shifted to the right side. Uh, these are actually by the fact uh, known on the frequency versus tan delta. And this is some examples here. When we rise the temperature, we can see the blue curve, which is more temperature. It is more to the uh, right side. And uh, oil conductivity will be more and more. This is in Bico Siemens. Uh, so the oil conductivity will be also change and get rise depending on the temperature. So the more temperature you have, making the curve shifted to the right, the more oil conductivity you are getting or you are making. But moisture should be not really changed because when you uh, heat the insulation you have, whether if it's oil or paper together, because these graphs are for transformer, moisture should remain the same. So you can see here, they are all gathered in one region, making no uh, shift up, keeping the same moisture values. And here due just to the uh, uh, shifting to the right side, it could be going up, but 
it should be same moisture as well values uh, with our software as a benefits of testing with our software idax 300 uh, we have the automatic analysis where with uh, just one single start button it will draw for you uh, the two curve based on the y and x it will draw the measured graph and model the graph it will compare and it will automatically give you all the traffic lights you should get like good a new uh, this, this uh, with distorted result or uh, that's for the tan delta for moisture we have more traffic lights and to be specific more here it's more colored indication uh, so you have the tan delta at 50 60 hertz uh, and uh, 20 degrees and you have it colored for you so whichever uh, you drop the tan delta there it will be good uh, new or deteriorated uh, if you have more moisture uh, we have also uh, automatically making for you the traffic light of it depends where you are below one or equal it would be as a new transformer and here uh, dry uh, moderately wet or wet also oil conductivity will be uh, measured for you based on that graphical result you are getting at 25 degrees in Bico Siemens per meter uh, so it is colored here yellow which is as good so this is just an example of one result uh, that I copied today uh, to show that uh, different colors here uh, and your uh, actual measurement today and it will be put in this uh, traffic light um, uh, pass and fail criteria. Also, we provide the capacitance value, which is in picofarad in this case, about 12K, 12.3K picofarad. Uh, these benefits and these graphic traffic lights, it's not derived uh, by MIGER. It's today within the main standards people should follow, and we are also following. Uh, we have the two main standards, uh, one from C Gray uh, 414, and another one which released uh, this one in 2010. The other one, which is IEEE made uh, with a big committee, MIGER participated in that, I should say and most of these guidance about traffic lights acceptance fast and fail is mentioning there and we are doing this uh, automatically by just measuring automatically the software will compare and put you the traffic lights where are you are you green ready to go start again with the transformer or maybe if it's commission test you can just uh, be be good with that result and you can rely on your transformer uh, another benefits we can drive today, which is uh, individual temperature correction, which is uh, the mean of use of the frequency response to estimate temperature dependence. Uh, also making correction from insulation test temperature, which is, could be 30, 40 degrees, all with the reference temperature at 20 degrees. Uh, also, uh, recently we have uh, updated our software, which is I'm bringing one slide later on as a single ITC or dual uh, ITC2, that's uh, the mean of the insulation. If you have one material or two material, you can still correct it. One material normally located within the bushings, uh, applications, uh, do, two material normally the transformer where you have oil and uh, paper into the transformers. And this is an example of the bushing that uh, this usually um, uh, as a insulation material the pushing itself did to transmit electrical energy through the grounded barrier so insulation control of electrical field distribution and we have several types we are uh, having different even acceptance and uh, like pass and fail criteria with all of these different types. So you can just pick and we will still assist it for you. Um, so for example, uh, we can do uh, for the bushings as a benefits of our testing today with the software, we have um, the measurement tan delta versus frequency here, which we can do it from likely 1000 or even 10,000 Hertz going down to one Hertz or lower Hertz even. 
So that is uh, what we do with the ITC is we are taking this and we are correcting and making it corresponding to temperature curve. So we take lower frequencies, we match it with the higher temperature. So we can say that which pushing is wet, which pushing is good uh, by just doing DFR. We cannot heat the, uh, the pushing and measure it at different temperature like in this case but we can change the frequency from our source and measure the tan delta, then we try to match it with the higher and higher temperature, finding problems that cannot be found at 30 or maybe in the mid of 30 uh, degrees. Uh, another benefits, which is a reporting feature. Recently, we have an update uh, on our uh, software IDAC software uh, 5.1.551, which you can download it free of charge today from Mega website if you visit it. Uh, only what you need to do is to log in with your uh, credential. You can register, you can download it, and then uh, use it immediately with your uh, existing I IDACs if you have. Uh, while you're reporting in the past, we were doing only single sweep in one click. So that one is still exists in the new report generator uh, functions. Uh, today, we can select more and more graph and build one report, and it's even more easy to use. Like you have three different version, HTML reporting, PDF reporting, or Microsoft Office Word document. So we even enhance this, and today it's a benefit for our customer with one click. Uh, they can generate all the reports they look for. Uh, additional benefits that our IDAX unit is the only unit almost today in the market that you can push its uh, voltage from the 200 volt to 2 kV uh, and this is because we have ability to make our uh, IDAX unit just uh, connected with this voltage amplifier unit and you can get from this output up to 2 kV. Uh, the area of application which is benefits for you or will enhance your measurement we can say that DFR and substation with DC or low frequency AC interference like high voltage DC substations this you can get the noises uh, by increasing the voltage also another uh, benefits which is measuring on low capacitance uh, objects for example, insulating oil, it is a very low capacitance values. When you measure with the higher voltage, you get uh, more uh, or less noises affected in that measurement. Uh, also CTs and pushings. Uh, mainly today we see big benefits of testing pushing by increasing the voltage. Well, CT or pushing CT is also uh, is there. Uh, like you can test it uh, with the, uh, for the insulation of that CTs and you get benefit of uh, reducing the noises you have, especially in a high voltage environment, uh, which is substations. Um, also, you can do tan delta 2 kV, which is acceptable somehow, at least for some type of motors. And even for power transformer, it should be acceptable. A standard today is uh, arguing whether if it's 10 kV or uh, 5 kV you are doing, but uh, that's basically you can still do it at 2 kV and you get no dependent of the voltage. Um, as a tip up testing, you can still use it up to 1.4 kV. Uh, tip up is good uh, for pushing to see what tan delta values at lower voltages or while you are changing the voltage. Uh, the tip up test is also another fingerprint result which you can compare it with the future. It has up to 50 milliamps maximum and capacitance range up to 5 microfarad with 1 hertz and less and less of course with higher frequency but that should be good enough for the power transformer bushings or CTs. So we are saying that it is easier to use. We have uh, one laptop normally connected to that IDAX. We make the connection in an easy way just like an insulation tester. Very much a standardized connection, easy to follow hookup diagram even in our software very much automated analysis of measurement data 
an automated of temperature correction that is really patent of mega uh, still valid today that you can use it and today we are even standardizing that within the international standards as i said the ieee c57 and the c gray brochure in one of the c gray brochure 414 since 2010 and also easy to understand uh, assist uh, aligned with international standards uh, so we are now shifting to the benefits of the assessments itself so what can you do with the assessments uh, for power transfer for example you can do loading capability and i'm providing uh, not bad example today with us we have the aging which we can also do uh, we have uh, like you can use it as an indication of service needed uh, for pushing and current transformer you can do as insulation status indication of replacement so when you have aged pushing or hcts it's not really a uh, big cost that you change it uh, making more reliable system not putting yourself in a risk uh, also for oems repair shops transformer workshops uh, mainly uh, like they do transformer uh, dry out process uh, where they need something continuously monitoring their dry out which is pro uh, IDAX is providing that with additional software we call it IDAX monitoring uh, also curing of resigns which is uh, while you build it uh, you you uh, curing you the papers that you are working with within the installation of the transformers as a loading capability, my example here says that you can go to the software, click analysis, click on temperature, and then select only the uh, dissipation factor. You will get here 10 delta versus uh, temperature. So for example, at 20 degrees, you have it around 0.3 something. If you are operating at higher temperature, 40 or 60, you still below 0.4 or equal. You go to 80 degrees you are now jumping to almost 0.8 uh, tan delta uh, or tangent delta uh, we like to operate our transformer in the range of 0.5 or below not higher not higher than that otherwise we need to do uh, moisture estimation and lots of analysis further which helping us to maintain it uh, in a better uh, insulation uh, uh, let's say so we don't uh, harm our insulation and by operating it with higher temperature for this example with higher tan delta so that's uh, some assessments uh, we get benefits of uh, i need to highlight it today for you that you can still use idax not just for tan delta and moisture no even for loading capability for your transformer and this is not really every day we are showing, but today I wanted to highlight this as a benefit of the assessment you are getting behind the IDEX. And it exists in the software, uh, but I, I know not many people are using it, so I just want to highlight it again. That you can tell your operation team that you should not exceed this much temperature or 60 or 70 to keep your transformer within a good range of 10 delta not to increase it higher and higher so that's induce more heat within your insulation which is killing your uh, insulation faster and faster mainly uh, temperature linked with the loading so if you have overloaded your transformer or close to 100 percent or maybe 100 percent you are going to heat your transformer it's just like full load uh, if you are know what temperature that you are working on better to look at this curve and say i don't want to increase it or i don't want to make it exceeding that uh, value uh, this is another example of uh, different transformer this was a new transformer actually replaced the previous transformer here when we try to analyze it same thing by clicking analysis temperature and putting only dissipation factor we can see that at 20 degrees we can see it is 0.2 so it is very much good value but when we increase the temperature here up to 40 up to 60 up to 80 it's even lower and lower so this insulation will really work better and better by increasing the temperature so you can make it full load and you can make it even overload and you still have good insulation levels so by uh, increasing the load you are normally increasing the 
transform of temperature so you have less tan delta so that allow you to make more load capability for that type of transform as a new so that uh, this example what i'm showing here is teaching us that insulation also need to be studied at different temperature looking to its tan delta so our idex our itc uh, patent method that uh, when you apply it you can get benefits of it in the assessment to make some load capability assessment it's not just for life assessment it is also for load capability uh, this is different uh, example of uh, pushing at six one here and you can see we have it uh, good value in 20 hertz at 0.3 something here as a tan delta when you increase with the temperature you get more tan delta but normally pushing can be taken up to one uh, tan delta so you're still in a good shape we have even better example with h2 the second phase we have it even more and more lower into its tan delta by just having more temperature so could be one pushing can work at lower temperature the other pushing work only at uh, likely higher temperature so this might be uh, decided to replace and you can see we have high dissipation factor at one hertz and that cause a higher tan delta at a higher temperature as well so this one is having good tan delta so that's is really good uh, insulation material for us at higher temperature so we rely on h2 phase pushing rather than h1 phase pushing here in this example so that's another benefit of assisting using this uh, tan delta versus temperature for uh, for this example it's uh, itc one used here even which is for pushing so uh, assessment of pushing uh, also put it in in our uh, not in our in, in the secret brochure that is uh, at different uh, frequencies you need to measure and you need to tell which one is a new i mean which one is age based on this criteria of uh, accepting that as a new or as aged uh, pushings uh, this also added recently in our software uh, just before the one uh, we are uh, making the full report in one click we have just added it also in idx 5.1 so we can do it at 50 hertz and we can also put traffic light in that not we can we already did uh, we have the traffic light here as a 50 hertz 20 degrees 15 hertz and 20 degrees and one hertz at 20 degrees as well and we can say which one good deteriorated and you need to investigate and if it's bad means basically replace your pushing or make some maintenance normally pushings are not in a way that we are performing maintenance on we are replacing that uh, because it's not big cost and it's even for replacing the, the bushings is not normally big cost so we have in this example sorry uh, as a pushing also can be uh, assisted by looking at uh, lower frequencies and you can see here uh, so dissipation factor at 50 hertz all look good values in the 50 hertz range but when we go with lower frequency and lower frequency we found the blue curve here jumping up up to 1.2 so that is indicating of bad bushing with uh, mentioning here also in our assessment so that is another benefits of assessment pushings we can also make the traffic light like that comparing the three phases together not in our software but uh, we can do it one by one and then we can put it all uh, nearby in, in manual tables by maybe words or anything so you can compare and say this is bad uh, uh, result or bad bushings mainly not bad result uh, last which is uh, an option that we can also provide with our idax uh, it's not coming standards uh, we call it uh, monitoring idax monitoring software and you can see from uh, one picture here the example that we started maybe here at day one after maybe day two and day three you can see that we are reducing here the moisture i know it's not not showing in a big screen but just quickly introducing that that during the drying process 
uh, we can reduce it. If you aim to see more details about this software, about some case study, we have done uh, one webinar. So you can, uh, if you are, if you're having the interest, you can email me. I'll provide my contact later. I can send more, much more details about this one. But the attention today is not really to talk much about this. So that was uh, another benefit that you can still do it. Uh, like in a dry out uh, of transformers, uh, impregnation of dry cellulose with liquid or ricins, also curing of ricins or epoxy materials. And this should be improving efficiency by knowing what percentage you are at and what you have reduced it to. Uh, so you can uh, terminate, uh, sorry, reach the goal in a faster time. Uh, instead of waiting more days uh, with uh, consuming more, even more power and time people just to monitor uh, the whole process for that. That was uh, uh, most of the benefits that we can provide today for you. Uh, we have divided it to two uh, benefits uh, for assessments and for the usage of our IDAX as well as testing of the software. I, I reach my end here. I will open the floor for the questions. And meanwhile, I can also share my contacts. Uh, this is my email. You can email me about uh, anything on the IDAX or benefits that you are uh, trying to get with IDAX, and I can guide you even better more and more with more special question or private question if you want to do it offline later. Now back to questions, and let's see if you have some. Uh, I can see one question asking uh, to share the BBT. Uh, if you open the handouts section, you can find a full uh, version of our presentation today and you can download it in a PDF way only. Uh, but also we are sharing uh, the material and sharing the recordings uh, of today uh, for all attendees so you can view it with electronic certificate of attending this type of webinar. Uh, I have one question. What is the difference between narrow pan DFR and DFR? Uh, DFR, uh, let's say it is a general word. Uh, mainly, uh, there's like two different category of equipment that doing DFR. In MIGAR itself, we have a Delta 4000 that does DFR. DFR there is a uh, frequency from one hertz to 500 uh, hertz or 505 exactly. Uh, this range of frequency, if we compare it with another unit, which is IDAX today we are talking mainly about, we have a more wider frequency range starting from 10,000 kilohertz going down to 0.1 millihertz as a total band. This band compared to the Delta 4000 is much wider. That wider range can give us estimation of the moisture and oil conductivity. And uh, this because the wider range, you can see the shifting up and down in the higher frequency and very, very low frequency in the millihertz ranges. So you can estimate the moisture. With Delta 4000, for example, you cannot do that. But uh, recently we have made uh, more highlights of the narrow band itself uh, from the Delta 4000. And we are comparing this with other units, non-mega units, that they stop at 15 hertz, while with our Delta 4000, we stop at one hertz. So we have a gap there between our unit and others that they stop at 15, we stop at one hertz in the Delta 4000 category range units, which is tan Delta with a 12 kV source. Today, I'm not aiming to talk about, but just because to answer this question, 
that 15 hertz to one hertz, we call it narrow band. Why we are highlighting that? This is the question. Uh, this frequency range, when you have higher than delta in that range, that's a trigger for you to start making a wider range, which is the, tot uh, the moisture estimation, for example, for the power transformer or for the bushing. So uh, we are uh, having uh, better specs when we say that we are not stopping at 15 with delta 4K. We can stop at one hertz, which is giving you some uh, region there that can show even some uh, suspected issues with pushing or transformer depends on what you test. And then you can say if I have suspected issues, like you have more tan delta, value you can say i want to do uh, idax measurement in that case doesn't mean you should not do idax unless you see this with narrow band no it is still needed to be uh, doing idax in a way that you are measuring moisture and oil conductivity as well and also for other benefits which i explained here uh, like loading capability could be one example and it is important for us so I hope to answer, I hope that I answered this question in full details. I will take the next question, which is, um, I'm not seeing this as a question rather than to comment more on that. Um, kindly guide on variable voltage tan delta and variable temperature tan delta uh what i can say here that when we do variable voltage than delta we actually name it in our units as a tip up test we make one tan delta reading at one kv then we rise the voltage to two kv and make another tan delta and then we change it again to three kv and make the tan delta i i understand from you when you say variable voltage tan delta that is the method and this we call it a uh, tip up test and also on a standard they call it like that so tip up test uh, is used uh, mainly when you have a uh, change in the tan delta by changing the voltage uh, in a theoretically and practically tan delta should not be changed when you change the voltage but we have some cases that it could be changed and that is actually indication of an issues normally. Uh, and I can give two best example here, which is pushing. We do uh, tip up on bushings and it is recommended that whenever you are testing pushing, you do this type of testing, tip up test. Uh, also another best example is the motor. The motor, by the nature of it, the more voltage you are putting on your motor, the more tan delta value you are getting. That's because it you normally bigger capacitance. And from this uh, curve we are getting, it will not be flat. It will have some shift up. Uh, the more voltage you are putting on the motor, we are studying there the delta, and there is different acceptance criteria for the motor in that case. So these two uh, best examples I said, motor and pushings, normally we are recommending people to do and perform tip up test, which is variable voltage tan delta. And when you say variable temperature tan delta, um, that is actually not everybody can give, unless if you are using our IDEX. When you say variable temperature tan delta, you are measuring only at one temperature. You cannot uh, like rise the temperature and measure again. And let's assume you can do, nobody will really do it and accept that you heat the transformer just to measure one tan delta measurement. That is basically going to cost you a lot to heat your transformer and measure again tan delta and again. So what we are doing here, we have a method called ITC, individual temperature correction, and that's by applying different frequency. We measure the tan delta. We get what we call it correction factor. 
by applying Arrhenius equation, which is very much advanced uh, engineering and physics formula there, understanding the material of the insulation, which is normally like you have two material within the transformer, paper and oil. By applying all of what I say, I know it's long, uh, we can get what's, what we say a tan delta versus temperature. We do not change uh, temperature and measure tan delta. We measure only one tan delta value at one temperature, but the only things we are changing is the frequency. So we are measuring at 50 hertz, we are measuring at maybe 100 hertz, at 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz. We also measure below 50 hertz, like 40, 20, 1 hertz, uh, 10 hertz, even 0.1 millihertz. By doing this uh, sweep range of frequency, uh, we can get the correction factor, and then we can say that at different temperature, what is uh, tan delta? And that's what I just show, uh, which is a benefit of assessment, is making load capability by understanding the tan delta versus the temperature. Uh, I hope I make it uh, clear uh, answering this question. And uh, I see no more question now. I'll wait for another minute. If more questions comes, I can answer. If not, then I'll put my contact there again in that minute. You can just uh, make me any offline questions on emails and we can also answer it. Uh, I have maybe uh, a question now asking what is the difference between DFR and uh, SFR, SFRA or FRA? Uh, DFR is what I explained today in this webinar. Uh, SFRA, if I compare it to DFR, uh, SFRA is measuring the excitation current with different frequencies on the power transformers. Uh, also part of the SFRA to measure the short circuit current with different, uh, with different frequencies. Uh, so from that, we are getting uh, one unique fingerprint for the entire uh, coils we have, the six coils normally, which is one coil per winding in the high side, three of them, and one in the lower side. Unless you have tertiary, then you have nine coils or nine windings. So in that case, we have uh, elements or, uh, uh, sorry, we have the excitation current when we measure it. We get the response of every capacitance between turn to turn, between turn to ground, and between even uh, one winding to another winding, between the winding itself to the core. So that's just like a fingerprint for the whole transformer. If it's get changed by time or by earthquake or by some fault, uh, that's what we say that it has some mechanical change. Uh, it has nothing to do with understanding the, the dielectric material, the insulation. So DFR is what I just explained that it should be looking after insulation only. Uh, mainly in uh, like three regions. We have high to ground region as an insulation, paper and oil together, also into the bushing itself as an insulator, uh, into sometimes high side to the um, 
ground, which is also paper and oil material. So in such region of the transformer as insulation, we are saying we are performing DFR on. But as a winding itself, when you have mechanical change, we need a test, which is SFRA, to indicate if you have same winding, does not have any mechanical change from the last time you measured or you make your reference before, or you make it today for future comparison, like you do it at factory, and then you do it at site. So during transport there, nothing happened to the transformer. I see no more questions, uh, so I would like to thank you. If you have more, again, this is my email. You can share with me your thoughts as well. And uh, I would like to thank you now. Uh, remember, we have few links in the chat sections for our channel, for our next events that you can maybe participate in. Thank you again for being with us today and have a great remaining of the day. Thank you.